All right, Lady Ada, what is this? Hi, everybody. It's me, Lady Ada. And we're broadcasting live from the Ada Fruit Factory in downtown Manhattan. With me is Mr. Lady Ada on camera control. And uh, everyone's resting here and the machines are off because we're about to start show and tell. The most fun you can have on the internet with all your clothes on in half an hour. We're going to call on all sorts of people from the Adafruit community as well as people who work at Adafruit uh, doing Adafruity things to see what they're up to, whether it's JavaScript, 3D printing, low power, accessible technology, LEDs, 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 sensors, or more. What are they doing? We're about to find out. So let's kick it off with Melissa. Hello. Hello. Oh, wow. So first of all, I want to show off Pixel, who's now over six pounds. Ooh, that's a nice cat. Yeah, so he's getting nice and big here. Yeah, good, healthy cat. Yeah, definitely. The other thing I wanted to show off that I have been working on is I have been playing around with a Bluetooth here, and I've been creating this little dashboard. So I'm going to start by, oh, so it goes already on here. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and connect to a circuit playground uh, blue fruit here. And so it shows the battery, which I don't actually have a battery attached, so it's just showing the USB power. Uh, temperature, light, uh, accelerometer. It has a little, you can do the switch. Uh, you can either turn it on or off. You can press the buttons and it'll Ooh. show them, or you can even play a sound. And I just have it playing a 440 tone uh, for one second, or half a second, actually. Uh, and then let me go ahead and connect to my clue here. And I have that here. And it has some more sensors on it, such as the accelerometer, magnetometer, or the gyroscope magnetometer, uh, humidity, barometric pressure and so it's showing all those and it does not have a switch so it's showing as none but it does the buttons a and b there and it should also do the tones okay yeah it's the first time i tested it and worked fine and i'm going to be adding neopixels next this looks great it's a great way to debug and test out your sensors and just getting it right into your web browser yeah, very easy. It works on Mac, Windows, and Linux. Yeah, we were like trying yeah. to figure out like what's a way that people can do like Bluetooth stuff on any desktop computer. This it turns might out be the only way. This is it. Yeah, it turns out this is the only way. This uh, is almost impossible every other way. So <laughs> good work, Melissa. All right, awesome Thanks. work, Melissa. Coming soon. All right. All right, next up, Brian and the child. Wait, Wait no, is. that's Scott. Yeah, get Scott's screen snuck in. Okay, okay, here we go. Hello. I got there. I have a little uh, friend that uh, my wife made. Um, so we watched The Mandalorian, fell in love. As you can see, I'm a big fan. So we had to do something with it. She is an amazing sculptor, and so she started sculpting the head. And uh, then she made an outfit, sculpted some hands and some little, that the feet aren't on right now, but she did some feet too. Doesn't uh, need feet. Yep. This so. is one of the most accurate looking um, replicas. It, it's movie quality. It was only it, announced at Toy Fair, so this is like people are probably yeah. like, how did you get that so fast? Yeah. Um, it's kind of nice having a private line on as many awesome sculptures as I want. Yeah. Um, but when you're casting stuff, you end up with uh, some rejects and you know multiple versions and stuff. Let me show you the, the mold here. Oh, God. So this is the mold for the head. Um, it's probably good 10, 15 pounds of silicon. Um, it was one of the more complex molds we made. Let's see if you huh. can. Yeah, you can see the ears. Yeah, the ears, and you've got all the registration marks for them. Yeah. Molds it together. Um, but you uh, end up with duplicates. So sometimes you have one with no eyes because you haven't put any eyes in yet. That's cool. But yeah. I, think I, I might, I want, I want to put one of these on a pike outside the door, but. <laughs> Vanessa well, like that. you can you can use the monster mask and put you know eyeballs in it that look around. Definitely, yeah, that, that'll probably happen at some point in time. Big adorable eyes. Yep. All right. Well, that's some great Mandalorian in going on there. All righty. All right. Outstanding. Okay, use the force. This is the way. That's the way. All right. Next work, uh, Brian. All right. Next up, 
Let's go to Scott and Scott's screen. Hello. Okay. So uh, I'm going to leave some cool stuff for JP to show in just a bit that I've been working on. But the other thing that I've been working on is uh, Phil shared that awesome video from the folks in Beirut about all about CircuitPython Day. And so I reached out to them and I said, hey, I think it'd be really cool if we had uh, CircuitPython translated into Arabic. And so uh, Allah has ha started helping uh, with that. And uh, Joey Castillo of Open Book fame has also chimed in and actually just let me know right before this that uh, I was using iTerm2 and it wasn't quite working, but it turns out Terminal on Mac does it correctly. So uh, hot off the press, uh, looks like it's actually going pretty well uh, in terminal, but not iTerm. So this, what you're seeing is, uh, is currently a mixture of German and Arabic uh, because they decided to start from the German copy of the translation file. Um, but here you can see that uh, we're starting to get messages uh, like errors and instructions uh, translated into Arabic. Awesome. Yeah, we got left to right, right to left. And what's cool is Python is Unicode friendly. Actually, one of the things I noticed that people were trying to figure out in the Arduino developer list is like, how do we add Unicode support? And it's like, mm -hmm. to C++, that ain't easy, but Python mm -hmm. has it natively. And so uh, multi-language, multi-font, it's one of the really yeah. most inclusive things that I really like about CircuitPython, right. MicroPython in general. And we should give a hug report also to Dave Putz, who just did a PR in the last couple of weeks to actually fix it so that when you type characters into the REPL that are uh, Unicode characters, they get reflected back as well. Sweet. Um, I had been trying to paste emoji in, and it wasn't working. <laughs> um, but now it should. Uh, it doesn't, this necessarily, this won't work on the REPL that shows on displays currently because it's complicated. Uh, but we would like to do that eventually. I think, uh, yeah, as the chips get bigger and we, I mean, because we'd have to have a font, a terminal font that supports every uh, Unicode point. So that's, I think for bigger chips, I think one day we'll be able to get there for sure. Yeah, and Joey has a great resource for the open book. He He's done that research um, and actually linked me to a really good description, of, particularly about how Arabic gets laid out because there, for every character there's like four different versions of it that are actually like written differently um and so joey's joey's thought about that and so he's he's been a great resource along with the folks in beirut yeah, yeah. you can also have like a separate chip with all this on it there's lots of things there's, that, yeah there's a lot of do. solutions but the languages they get very very interesting very quickly i mean english is a particularly boring language to uh store and manage yeah. And uh, one thing I wanted to mention, and this is the entire CircuitPython team, and uh, specifically Scott, when we were working on CircuitPython, we built it thinking, wow, maybe someone somewhere else is going to use it who, has an, who speaks another language. So we thought about this on how we build it every time we have a new release. And also, you can contribute even if you don't write code, just to help with the translations. Yep. Uh, we put that in our newsletter each week, but everyone can help out with this because we'll that that will never never ever be finished with that. So everyone can always help out, and then we also have people starting to translate the documentation, too. So. Yep. So if you speak another language, uh, reach out to us and and contribute, so that it's easier for folks who only know that language to get going. Yeah, and if you go to circuitpython.org/downloads, you can see every time we have a new build and the languages that we have for each one, mm -hmm. which that's really hard, by the way. <laughs> and, and if you just want to see how easy it is, we also have an English pirate translation if you want to get your pirate on. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thank you so start. much, Scott. All right. Thanks, Scott. Thank and Scott Green. Yeah. All right. Next up, let's go to JP. Hey, guys. How are you doing? Hello. Yeah. I've got a little extra thing to show here. So. Um, Things move fast around here. Earlier today, none of this existed in my life. And uh, Scott has been working on a uh, Raspberry Pi uh, broadcast net Bluetooth bridge. Uh, and now I have it up and running and it's super awesome. So what I've got is a Circuit Playground Express uh, that is running, I'm sorry, a Circuit Playground Bluefruit that's running uh, some code that's just sending the light sensor value to over Bluetooth to um, this Raspberry Pi over here. I'm going to run this code on the Raspberry Pi uh, and then switch over to my Adafruit IO dashboard. And so what I'm doing now is any light sensor values every couple seconds that 
uh, change on my Circuit Playground Bluefruit are being sent via Bluetooth over to the Raspberry Pi, which is then on Wi-Fi, and it's sending it up to the great big Adafruit I.O. in the sky, which is how we're seeing this. So anyone who could log into my uh, public dashboard will see uh, this showing up on here, uh, which is really exciting for people who want to log things, different uh, sensors they can go in. I've got a, just a light sensor on here, but there's also a temperature sensor that I can uh, use that should blast it out because I have a low threshold sense on there. Um, so this is kind of the beginning of some really cool and interesting stuff for uh, collecting different Bluetooth sensors and uh, getting them all on this one Raspberry Pi that I can see with this uh, kind of cute little display I have, but it's also shooting it up to Adafruit IO for, for other uses. So that's what's going on. I like being able to use you know Bluetooth as a sensor network because it's low scale, low power, it's good for a home or an office. Um, and yeah, Raspberry Pi is a, is a perfect Bluetooth to Wi-Fi bridge. And almost everyone's got one at this point. Yeah, you have them when you do them. And, and with these little screens, this one's actually a touch screen. So you could go, uh, even if you have it kind of with without a mouse and keyboard on it, you could at least go and, and look at oh, some, yeah. some data on there. I think, uh, I think this is all I have on here right now. But earlier, I also was showing a graph of temperature as it was changing. And there's also uh, in this sample code, uh, the state of that little switch, if you throw that switch back and forth. So, you know, you can imagine just the sheer number of things that can be collected off of something like a clue uh, or some of our upcoming feather uh, sense boards, don't ask, don't tell. Um, and this uh, circuit playground blue fruit, we have a lot that we can collect on these low cost, low power boards, and then use that data uh, with, with Adafruit IO. So, Yay. All right. Yeah, really coming. It'll be, they'll be live tomorrow. So don't forget everybody to watch JP's work. Yeah. I'll be doing more of this on the show tomorrow and I'm putting together some documentation on how you'll, build your uh, your Raspberry Pi setup uh, so that it all works beautifully for you. And then you'll be able to start uh, looking at some different example code for different uh, sensors that we have as we, okay. as we build up on this. So. Yay. On, okay. All right, thank you, JP. Okay, yeah, a bunch of people. We're gonna keep going. No, yeah. Pedro. Hey, what's up, folks? Hey, guys. Uh, so yeah. this week, not a project, just a quick little overview on the Circuit Playground Blue Fruit. So we can just plug like some of the wearable uh, three printed things that we have for it. Oh, it's nice. So the little watch for it, and then the little dock, of course, still fits on that. So you can get yes. the, the STLs and that Fusion 360 file, so you can edit all that. But Noah has a really cool preview of a future project. Yes, we're on. we've been collaborating with Liz Clark. You may have seen her on several weeks. She's been uh, showing the demos, Circuit, circuit Python-powered MIDI stuff. So I'm working on a guitar-based um, controller with MX switches, uh, strum and our favorite, the whammy bar. So we're going to have whammy bar on there. Right. We also have accelerometer uh, support, so you can do some modulation. Uh, it's based off the Grand Central M4. Um, so we are going to start working on the learn guide for this. Yeah. And again, shout out to Liz Clark for helping us out with this one. Yeah. All right, looking great. Jam it out. All right, we'll play um, your speed up video and also the blue fruit videos tonight on the show. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks Thank so much. Thanks, Thanks so much. So fashionable, so stylish, so rocking out. All right. All right, next up, Phil B. Hello. Hello there. Uh, when you were starting up, you mentioned LEDs, LEDs, LEDs. LEDs, uh, that's you. Yeah, so that's what I've been working on. Let me switch cameras here. See if that works. Come on, camera. There it is. Okay. So have this 64 by 32 matrix uh, running off a of Feather M4, which is nothing new. We have a library that does this already, but um, I am working on a new version of that library that um, kind of leaves uh, AVR behind because it's just it's been limiting us. And this will let us do things like this is showing the full 16 bit color that uh, the GFX library gives us. Uh, we can do longer chains or different sizes. But the important thing with the new library is we are aiming toward having a code base that will be able to move over to CircuitPython as well. So you'll be able to use the matrices there in CircuitPython. But I'm starting with the, the Arduino library because you kind of got lower level uh, access there. Yeah. So that's what's going on. Okay. Okay. Your camera can't handle this. Cause I know, right? Actually, <laughs> Goes uh, blurry like that. You can kind yeah, of. Yeah, it's, it's freaking out. All right, cool. Uh, all right, LEDs. So coming soon. Yeah. More matrix, more matrix math. Yep, yep. That's the plan. All right, mm -hmm. thanks, Phil okay. B. All right, next up, 
Next up. Bill, AT Makers. Bill, AT Makers and friend. Hey guys, how are you? Hey, Bill. Hello. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm winging this. I was not planning on being on today, but I'm here at Gravy in Orlando. I hope the video is coming through. It might not. I'm sorry. So this is yeah. Andrea with uh, Hi, Andrea. Team 15. And so uh, very much uh, Girls Who Code, yes. first like a girl kind of kiddo here. So we are at their facility in Orlando, which everybody should have this facility, right? Yeah, so amazing. Uh, I thought I'd, I'd run out. So I'm here because she had me come over to talk about these, the, the feather, the freedom wings that they're making for yeah. us. And they're oh, right. you're, you're going to your um, chairman's award yes. presentation. And so this is their outreach. Yeah. Can you explain what the, the chairman's award is? So the chairman's award is something in first in first response competition that's based on what the team does for the community and how we connect with the community and how we how we made an impact on the areas that surround us. Excellent. And you're working with us and uh, with Able Gamer. Yes. To to do that. And so she had me come over to talk about it, and I thought, well, it's Wednesday night. I can have her talk about it. <laughs> yeah. All and right. Share that with, with you guys. Um, I will tell you that this is. If this lets me spin this camera around, yeah, this facility Ooh. is awesome. So, wow, that's huge. Lemore, Lemore, this place, this is like where I should have gone to school, right? They set up these boards oh, with that's errors cool. that you have to troubleshoot. Oh, right? nice. And, and they've got they've got everything. So over there is what? How, what kind of saw is that over there? You got a yep. you got table saws, but you have like CNC routers. You've got. All kinds of HVAC testing stuff. And here's the rest of the team who's going to get mad at me for putting them on camera. Hi, but team. They're working on a Wednesday night until 9 o'clock on their robot doing CAD stuff. Hi, kids. How are you? Well, they're hey. going with, that's how you know you're an adult. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. So the, this is a very heads-down crew at the moment. All right. But um, I thought I'd introduce them and say hi. And chase Andrea around. All right. Well, thank you, Andrea, for coming by. And Andrea, because you were brave enough to come on show and tell, you're going to get a sticker. Bill can uh, get you info on how to do that. All you have to do is email support at Able Crew, and we'll send you a sticker that you can uh, on put on your freedom wing. Competition. How about that? It's on the robot. Yeah. And thank you for working on the um, freedom wing um, enclosures and getting those out to folks, Andrea. It's a really cool project. Yeah, of so thank, thank you so much. And it's a great way to learn manufacturability and deliverability. And, and you know, it's really easy to make one of something, but it's really hard to make 10. It's much, much harder than people realize. You learn a lot. Yeah. I'll tell you that Lamore's favorite thing is making test rigs. I love right? looking at you. Every time I look at you, you're making testers. Because it's a, it's a puzzle in a puzzle. Because you have to figure out what could go wrong, making things not that, what goes right. Making things that make, making things is always good. Just like helping people that help others is always good. Yeah. So. All right. All right. Well, well, thanks, thank you so much. Andrea. Thanks, Bill. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Okay. All thank right. you. Let's All right. go to Liz. Hey, Liz. Hey, how's it going? Hey, hey. So, because you were mentioned earlier in the show, I think that's how this works in the Democratic debates. Is this what this is? The 11 <laughs> I think You've so. got a three-minute response. All right, go. And I actually have the guts of that upcoming project. Hmm. Uh, so right now I'm breadboarding up a Grand Central. Uh, here's my cat. Um, and we've got the strum buttons and cool. all the pots working. Uh, and then I also uh, go to my screen. Um, I started working on a step counter with the clue. Um, yeah. However, I had an incident with the screen today. So uh, a replacement screens in my future. Uh, but um, I'm printing to the REPL right now um, a step count. Uh, so I'm starting to work on that now too. Awesome. Yeah. I'm going to reply to your email, by the way, there's a step counter built into the accelerometer and I actually have it half working. Oh, so, really? Yeah. It's, it's actually one of the nice things about the chip that I don't talk about, but there's a built-in pedometer. Um, so we can use that and that way you don't have to do any management. It's like you can do other stuff while the pedometer is going. So you can like, okay. Mm -hmm. that's, yeah. that's amazing. <laughs> we learned a lot, I'm sure. So I, yeah. You're fast. Cause you said email a couple hours ago. I'm like, if after the show, I'm going to reply, but it, you, no. you just couldn't help yourself. I couldn't. It was too much. Coding so fast. Um, no. All right. That's good stuff. You got a lot going on there. You got music. You got yeah. tunes. You got exercising. Play all right. Spaghetti. All hey. right. Good stuff coming from Thanks you. Thanks so much, Liz. Thanks, Liz, for the update. Bye. Okay. Next up, okay, we're going to go to Matt. Matt. Matt screen. Hi. Hey, Matt. Hi, how's Matt. it going? Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. All right. 
So uh, I have an update on my Surface Dial project. So um, before I just kind of had the software going, but now I have a 3D printed enclosure for it. And I got some LEDs on it. Well, that's nice. Uh, I 3D printed. Uh, I 3D printed it with a wood fill material. So um, in the future, I want to actually end up sanding and staining it because it'll look like this. Mm -hmm. look like yeah. Wood. Um, and so now I'm kind of way more functional and easier to use. So I can actually like um, bring up the menu. Um, I programmed in like a custom uh, tool, so I can. Um, I programmed it to uh, Control F. So now I can like. Um, in my browser, I can scroll through and find things. If I go to like um, a painting app, this is where it gets really fun. Um, I can use it to change color of my pen from writing. Mm. So then I can like, so I can just spin it, and then it's changing the hue. I can, and then I can oh. change the right saturation as well. So there's a button in the middle and you can rotate. So there's two, there's two things that it can do. Yeah, it's basically a, a three button macro controller with Windows software that is making it, allowing it to do these on-screen dial thing. Mm -hmm. So it's got left rotate, right rotate, and then click. And cool. so different software can actually write different tools to interpret it. Um, but it's just a lot of fun. Um, a lot of different apps support in different ways. That looks um, great. I know Bill's probably like, hmm, how can I use that for accessibility? That's yeah. a nice little design there. Good work. Yeah. All right. All right, Matt. Well, email support at .com. You can continue to get stickers if you've got, if you already received one or you can get another one. George Graves says, nice design. Yeah, good work. All right. Sweet. Thank you, Matt. Nice right, to see an update. Two more folks. So we're going to get to. Uh, Flavinov, I think. Flavio. Flav 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 and then we're going to get to Richard. Flavio F. Hey, guys. How you doing? Hey, hey, hey. Hello. I was just at the Varick Street last week, and I was thinking of you a lot. <laughs> I actually got to see the LEDs on uh, on your window. <laughs> yeah. That was what I got. It was kind of fun. fun. Yeah. Anyways. Um, What's going on? I got this uh, trellis. So, um, you know, this is your standard trellis, and I put an ESP32 on it. And what I wanted to do is just have a generic, I know a lot of folks use this for music making. I'm yeah. no musician. What I really wanted it to do is to have a super generic way of having buttons to control things, yeah. as well as a, a way of projecting stuff to it. So, um, so what I did is I, I'm gonna put a link here so you can see. Um, it's basically a Wi-Fi based trellis. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I have, I also have a, I guess that I, I was hoping some of you guys will be interested, but basically through, M, through MQTT, um, you can subscribe to events. So let's say, um, and, and you can do this too, uh, if you open the GIST, it's just, a, it's just I have an MQTT server running, but basically if I press the button and I hear, I have a, a subscribed uh, screen, which you can do as well. And if I press the button, you just see events coming in to it. So oh yeah. And then, if I, and then I have a whole sorts of combinations. If I press multiple buttons, I get different hex values. And then I have a concept of uh, short and long presses to uh, give you all sorts of, anyways, millions of combinations <laughs> on what you can do. And, awesome. uh, and another thing I have is it, I have it subscribing to events. So if I do a, a, a certain MQTT messages, I can have like its status. So like how much battery is left. I don't know if you guys can see my screen. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then and then you can control the 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 the, uh, the colors, right? Which is super cool. Like I have a with just a little push of a button, I can make it uh, publish different things. So like uh, right now I'm pulsing. I can change the color. I can have um, uh, let's see uh, a fun event. I can have a so I can have animations too. Like I'm gonna do this. Uh, so basically, I'm just publishing to a topic in MQTT, and uh, and I can make it. Ooh. Right. And it, this the cool thing is it's MQTT, and so anywhere in the world, anybody who's connected to any MQTT has the ability not only to get events from it when I push the button, right, but also control this the uh, screen. So nice this, work. Yeah, and it's all it's uh, based off of your MQTT library, Lady Ada, that you wrote yeah. like, five years ago. <laughs> 
Yeah. It's still, look, it's a, it's a 20 year old protocol. All yeah. that Travis is missing is an as seen on show and tell sticker. Don't forget to email support at Adafruit and get your sticker. Nice work. And if you publish that project, let us know. Send us a link and we will post it on the blog. Well, it's totally posted. And I have a, a, Git, uh, a GitHub repository as well as a. Uh, oh, cool. uh, so, yeah, I'll post it in here as well. Thank you okay. so much. Thank Yay. You. Thank you. Thank you. you. All, right, All right. Last but not least, Richard, play, Richard us play us out. Hey, guys. So, to kind of follow the theme of <clears throat> NeoPixels, Bluetooth, and MQTT, um, I did an upgrade to my scarf recently. And <clears throat> so what this is doing, let me switch. Um, so you can see this is my cell phone here, and this is using the, um, the Bluetooth uh, Bluefruit app uh, from Adafruit um, using UART. And it has this MQTT section up on top. So that's connecting to my Adafruit IO. You can see there's a couple of commands that are already coming through. <clears throat> and now if I switch over, so this is um, my dashboard and I can change the color of the scarf from Green. here. But, oh, let's see, there we go. I look into the that. Cyberpunk Fashion Network here, it's cool. I know, I like how <laughs> you got like, the, you got like your image oh. in the thing. All right, there we go. So now it's going to update to green. It's a little hard to see. No, that's you great. can see the new message that pops up. Um, but I also added an alert. So I can tie this in to um, IFTTT, and you could kind of see that the scarf. Um, Does it go red? It, it kind of like strobes red mm. when the alert comes through. Um, now, the cool thing about this is uh, it, it's wearable and it's using Bluetooth Low Energy. Um, to communicate with the app on my phone, but the app is then connected through my cell phone's uh, internet access to MQTT. So basically, I can take this everywhere I want and still be able to get notifications off of Adafruit IO uh, without having to connect the scarf directly to a Wi-Fi network or using like a, a, a GSM or LTE thing. So uh, that's kind of what I've been working on this weekend. Yeah. All right. Uh, nice work. Very cool. All that's missing is a sticker. Don't forget to email support. We'll send you a sticker if you want one, or you can just reuse one of the many yeah. stickers we sent you. Yeah. Yeah. I need to come up with like an embroidery pattern for like fabric stuff for that. Right. Okay, cool. Thank you so much, Richard. All right. Thank you, everybody. Wow. We got through everybody with some amazing LED projects, yeah. wireless projects. I think like, we had a whole rainbow of projects yeah thank you everyone for making this the best half an hour of our week every single week this is show and tell we do this every wednesday at 7 30 p.m eastern time in one minute or less we'll see you on ask an engineer be right back bye everybody bye everybody <laughs>